Hello and welcome to another recording for Survey of British History, Culture 1. Today we deal with the second half of Unit 3, which revolves around the stories of the Vikings in England, the Vikings invasion and settlement in England. we jump into this new phase of British history, let's remember those dates that we dealt with in the previous units. Remember 55 BC and 54 BC, these were the first and the second failed expeditions by the Romans. And then we have 43 AD, the conquest year, and the colonization for almost 400 years from 43 AD until 410 AD. Those were the important dates of the Romans' invasion and conquest of Britain. Then we have 409, 410, 449 until 1066. Now let's recall. 409, this is the last of the legions of the Romans to leave the province of Britannia. 410, remember, these are the beginnings of raids from neighboring tribes, Picts, Scots, Irish, and Saxons. And then we have 449, this is the beginning of Anglo-Saxon invasion. We have 455, this is the full-scale migration of Anglo-Saxon tribes. Today we have new dates. 793, 865, 954. Almost almost 100 years separate each of these dates. Let's jump into the Vikings' attacks, conquests, and later on defeat in Britain. This green part on the map is the place from which new attacks were launched onto Britain. What are these countries? Let's see. At the end of the 8th century, Britain was subject to more attacks and raids from the north. This time it was from the Vikings, known as Norsemen. This took place around 793. Britain was subject to more attacks and raids from those countries in the north. These were the Vikings. The Viking, These tribes had amassed armies and they arrived from the Scandinavian lands Norway, Sweden, and of course Denmark. They were great and unified. The tribes, the Vikings, كانت متحدة ومتماسكة للغاية. They were unified from unity. And they invaded almost all of Britain. نبص على الخريطة تاني كده. Norway, Sweden, and Denmark. The Vikings were pagans and heathens. Pagans and heathens كلمتين بيدلوا على الوثنية أو تعدد الألهة. لكن pagans كلمة عامة 
بتدل على عبادة آلهة متعددة. هيثنز بالتحديد الوثنيين اللي بيعبدوا الآلهة الجرمانية أو آلهة بلاد الشمال. يعني لما نقول هيثنز المعنى الأصلي للكلمة يشير إلى الترايبس الجرمانيك ترايبس اللي بتعبد آلهة بلاد الشمال. Those Vikings were masters of seafaring and the creators of the historic warship known as the Longship. كانوا ملاحين مهرة للغاية سادة masters of seafaring الملاحة and navigation خدنا كلمة navigation قبل كده and creators هم اللي اخترعوا السفينة المشهورة جدا اللي اسمها the Longship the historic warship known as the longship السفينة الحربية التاريخية اللي اسمها the longship it was famous for its mobility and speed كان عندها قدرة سلسة على الحركة and it was very very speedy and gave the viking supremacy over their enemies and because of this uh, longship famous for its mobility and speed, they had supremacy, سيادة وتفوق وقوة over their enemies because it could navigate, they could navigate it into seas and rivers at the same time. كانوا بيخشوا بها في البحر وفي الأنهار كمان كانت تقدر تمشي في المية الضحلة. Let's remember that the Anglo-Saxons were, most of them, Christians now. And it's important to know that those heathen or pagan tribes came to this Christian land and there were monasteries and churches full of wealth, gold, manuscripts and things to loot. أشياء يمكن الاستيلاء عليها. So during their invasions, the Vikings burned monasteries. Monks and priests were monstrously murdered and positions were looted. عشان كده بنقول أهمية إن هما نعرف إن هما وثنيين. جم على الأنجلو ساكسونز أو الممالك الأنجلو ساكسونية اللي كان أغلبها مسيحي. وأول حاجة هجموا عليها هي المونستريز لأن هي مليانة بالممتلكات القيمة. Monks and priests were monstrously murdered قتلوا بمنتهى الوحشية ذبحوهم الحقيقة المونكس والبريستس واستولوا على ممتلكاتهم سواء كانت من الذهب أو من المخطوطات. Anglo-Saxon kingdoms were conquered one by one. وبدأت تتساقط الممالك واحدة وراء الثانية. With the aid of their amassed armies and their long ships, the Vikings invaded many countries and reached many lands in the Mediterranean. ده كان عصر ال supremacy أو التفوق. من ناحية ال Vikings اللي دهم فرصة إن هم يكتاحوا بلاد كتير وصلوا في الاجتياح ده لمنطقة البحر المتوسط The Mediterranean By 865 the Vikings invaded all northern England taking control of the Anglo-Saxon kingdoms of Northumbria, East Anglia and most of Mercia نبص على الخريطة كده ونشوف التواريخ اللي موجودة Let's have a look at the dates. As we said before, around the end of the 8th century and then on to the 9th century, ولما بنقول القرن الثامن مقصود به من أول 701 فما فوق. القرن التاسع 801 فما فوق. فإحنا من أول القرن الآخر القرن الثامن عندنا من أول السبعميات آخر السبعميات here 
see here and other parts too here the north okay and then on to the 9th century notice the number of attacks by the vikings on england and the other parts around britain northumbria mercia east anglia parts of wales and also parts of ireland many of these parts were under the full control of the vikings only wessex under king alfred the great resisted the advancement of the vikings فقط wessex هذا المكان هذه المملكة Wessex under King Alfred the Great تحت حكم الملك العظيم Alfred that resisted the advancement of the Vikings هي الوحيدة من دون الممالك اللي كانت موجودة قومة تقدم الفايكينغز It remained free from the Vikings dominance under King Alfred the Great وفضلت تحت حكم Alfred the Great حرة من سيطرة الفايكينغ. But who was King Alfred the Great? And why is he celebrated in the history of the Anglo-Saxons as the Great? لي هو شخصية محتفة بها. He is a celebrated figure. Figure هنا بمعنى شخصية. لي محتفة به كشخصية في تاريخ الأنجلو-Saxons. In the 9th century, Alfred the Great was able to stop the Vikings from taking over all of England. So this is the major reason, the sabab al This is the main cause why history refers to Alfred as the Great. Lihi tariq biyushir ila Alfred ala innu Alfred al-Azim. He was able to stop the Vikings from taking over all of England. يبقى تحت حكمه Wessex was able to protect all of England. قدرت Wessex تحت حكمه تحمي إنجلترا من التحكم والسيطرة بتاعة الفايكينغز عليها كلها. He agreed to make peace with them and so some Vikings settled down in eastern England, which they made their home for years. Alfred the Great said to himself, I will not be able to resist the Vikings for good. This is a very difficult war, and they are masters of the sea, and they have amassed armies. So, with he agreed to make peace in New York now. Salam, or Itfaid Salam, saying that they will take part of English land to settle down in. Ahadu was in Ard, Inglaterra, and Ahadu fiha was the Karu. And this was an agreement. You will not fight us, and you will take this land to settle in and make your own home. هتاخدوا الأرض وتقعدوا فيها and make your own home وتستقروا بها والحرب هتوقف ده كان الاتفاق The areas where the Vikings stayed were called the Danelaw المناطق اللي قعدوا فيها اتسمت ب Danelaw The Anglo-Saxons and Vikings finally became neighbors thanks to Alfred Wisdom. نتيجة لحكمة Alfred استقر الفايكنجز في المناطق اللي هي في الخريطة الأورانية اللي هي بالأحمر دي جزء من نورثامبريا وإيس إنجليا وعندنا كمان جزء في الشمال شمال اسكتلندا وجزء من أيرلندا وبقية الأماكن كانت free and Alfred the Great was able to resume his building of his kingdom Wessex. وبدأ ألفريد يستمر في بناء مملكته مرة أخرى بعد السلام مع الفايكينغز. 
This is one of the most famous sayings by Alfred. دي من أحد أشهر مقولات Alfred the Great. The saddest thing about any man is that he be ignorant, and the most exciting thing is that he knows. أكثر الأشياء مثارا للحزن هي أن يكون الإنسان جاهل، وأكثر الأشياء إنعاشا وتحفيزا للروح هي أن يتمتع بالمعرفة. دي من أقوال ألفريد المشهورة. ألفريد زي ما احنا شايفين was not only a good warrior، ما كانش بس محارب قدير ومحنك، or a wise king أو ملك حكيم بدليل إنه عمل ال peace accord أو making peace with the Vikings. But he was also a scholar and a man of vision. لكن كان باحث علم وعنده رؤية. He had a vision. كان عنده رؤية. And he laid the foundation of modern England. وهو اللي حط حجر الأساس أو وضع حجر الأساس to lay the foundation. الماضي laid the foundation حجر الأساس أو الأساس لmodern England. يبقى مش بس منع uh, the, the invasion of the Vikings أو the control أو the dominance of the Vikings all over England لكن كمان he put the or laid the foundation of modern England. Now let's see the achievements of Alfred the Great. زي ما قلنا Alfred was a wise king and he had a vision كان عنده رؤية A very important thing to Alfred was what we call social stability الاستقرار الاجتماعي and justice والعدالة So one of the first things that he made when he became king was good laws إصدار قوانين جيدة and he introduced new legal codes وأصدر أيضا مصطلحات قانونية جديدة all this would contribute to a good system of justice نظام للعدالة جيد he also promoted education and believed it was very important because he was a scholar كان باحث and he was a translator and a very good translator too لأنه كان مترجم رائع من اللاتينية للأنجلو ساكسون أو للإنجليزية روج أو نشر uh, التعليم في المملكة because he believed it was very important social stability meant justice and education ال 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 الأمان الاجتماعي uh, معناه بالنسبة لألفريد كان العدالة والتعليم He was the first king to order the translation from Latin into Anglo-Saxon so that people could read in their native tongue من أوائل الملوك اللي قرروا ترجمة اللاتينية إلى الإنجليزية أو الأنجلو-ساكسونية علشان الناس تقدر تتعلم تقرأ بلغتها الأصلية in their own native tongue native tongue اللسان أو اللغة الأصلية لهم أو لغة الحديث المحلي It was during his reign that the monks on his orders and guidance began writing the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle فاكرين مدونة التاريخ الأنجلو-ساكسوني The Anglo-Saxon Chronicle It was during the reign كان في خلال حكم Alfred the Great reign حكم that he ordered the monks to start writing this chronicle من بداية عصره بدأت كتابة المدونة and he had uh, copies كان بيؤمر دايما uh, يتعمل نسخ that would be uh, placed in different monasteries and in different places in the kingdom so that he would keep it safe وكان بيؤمر ان هم يعملوا كذا نسخه تتوزع على كذا مكان في المملكه علشان يبقوا في امان لو حاجه من النسخ دي حصل لها اي حاجه. It was on his orders بناء على طلبه او اوامره and guidance وتوجيهاته. ودي صور من صفحات من الكرونيكل The Anglo Saxon 
chronicle. And as you can see, it's not only uh, written, it's also decorated and illuminated. زي ما قلنا مزخرفة ومطعمة بمية الذهب. He also built forts and walled towns to protect them from the Vikings' attacks. من الحاجات اللي عملها مهمة جدا إنه بنى حصون قوية جدا لحماية مدن المملكة. And he walled the towns. بنى أسوار حوالين المدن. To wall يعني يصور. To wall towns يبني أسوار حوالين المدن. كل ده حماية. From the attacks, or to protect them from the Vikings' attacks, he built a fleet of warships. وبنى أسطول رائع من السفن الحربية. A fleet of warships to guard the coasts from the raiders. لحماية أيضا الساحل من هجوم أو اكتياح الغزو ال Viking. ويقال إنه ألفرد شيفس وير لارجر وإن السفن بتاعته كانت أكبر سويفتر أسرع ستيدير أكثر ثباتا وتماسكا أو توازنا في الملاحة وتتحمل الأمواج العاتية and road higher at sea than the Vikings ships عن السفن بتاعة الفايكنج المنافسة في صناعة السفن من أيضا من إنجازات ألفرد ذا جريت. ألفرد died in 899 uh, في آخر القرن التاسع. ألفرد died and was buried at his capital city of Winchester. And he is, as we said, one of the very few British kings described as Great. وليل قوي لما يكون في ملك بيسمى بالجريت ومنهم ألفرد. Now that Alfred was gone, بعد رحيل ألفرد, did the English defeat the Vikings and take back the lands? هل هزم الإنجليز الفايكنجز وأخذوا أرضهم مرة تانية? That land in which the Vikings were now settled. called the Danelaw الأرض اللي كان اسمها Danelaw اللي كان قاعد فيها ومستقر فيها الفايكنجز The answer is yes After Alfred the Great came Edward the Elder جه بعدي الملك Edward the Elder ابن Alfred the Great وبعد Edward the Elder كذا ملك ومنهم Athelstan Edward the Great and Athelstan were very distinguished kings هنشوف الاثنين عملوا ايه مع الفايكنجز. So after Alfred the Great, English kings gradually, بالتدريج, recaptured more and more land from the Vikings. قدروا يسيطروا على capture يأخذ أو يسيطر على recapture يأخذ مرة أخرى ويعيد السيطرة على more land from the Vikings. Alfred's son, King Edward the Elder, اللي حكم من 899 to 924, almost 25 years, fought for control over the Danelaw. Most of his reign, أغلب حكمه, was fighting for control over the Danelaw, وفعلا he defeated the Vikings, هزمهم في أماكن كتير, and conquered lands in the south east, and midlands of England في الجنوب الشرقي أو الشرق الجنوبي ووسط إنجلتر But it was Alfred's grandson King Athelstan who defeated the Vikings and their last kingdom at York فضلوا الفايكنجز وما يسيطرين على الأماكن كتير especially at York So, King Athelstan was the king who defeated the Vikings and took the last kingdom at York. And he pushed English power north as far as Scotland, which he invaded and controlled. لكن بعد حكم Athelstan, اللي استمر من 
939 after his death the vikings recaptured york مره تانية سيطروا على يورك مرة تانية لكن the coming of king edred things changed around 954 history was rewritten as far as the vikings are concerned حوالين 945 التاريخ ده مهم جدا لانه uh, وجود الفايكنجز في انجلترا uh, اعيد كتابته مرة اخرى King Edred ruled from 946 until 955, and he was another uh, of King Alfred's grandsons. It was not until 954 that the Anglo-Saxons, led by King Edred, drove out the last king of the Vikings from Northumbria and York and killed him in battle. 954 تاريخ مهم شهد مقتل آخر ملوك الفايكنجز the last king of the vikings and their defeat in Northumbria and York King Edred drove the last king from Northumbria and York and killed him in battle So the Vikings, as a result, agreed to be ruled by England's king, a powerful king, Idrid, and their domination finally came to an end. وسيطرتهم على الأرض الإنجليزية أخيرا came to an end intact. So when did the Anglo-Saxon rule come to an end? إمتى انتهى حكم الأنجلو-ساكسونز في إنجلترا؟ After the death of Edward the Confessor, آخر ملوك الأنجلو ساكسونز uh, اللي توفى سنة 1066. 1066. إحنا قلنا الملوك المهمة بالنسبة لنا Alfred the Great, Edward the Elder, Athelstan, and Edred. بعد Edred جه تقريبا 9 kings وكان آخرهم Edward the Confessor. Edward المعترف he was a very religious king وعشان كده سموه Edward كثير الاعتراف كثير الاعتراف في الكنيسة طبعا Edward the confessor was an Anglo-Saxon king of Norman French descent and this piece of information is very important المعلومة دي مهمة جدا انه من نسل فرنسي his mother was French and his family And his father, of course, was Anglo-Saxon. فكان في نسل فرنسي في دم. He was a good king, and his reign was characterized. It was حكمه. It was characterized متميز ب stability and peace. الاستقرار والسلام. He was wise, زي Alfred the Great, and was able to bring together his powerful earls, who were greedy for power, and the throne. under his rule هو كان حكيم للغاية وقدر انه to bring together يوحد القادة العسكريين his powerful earls under his rule the most powerful of those earls اكتر واحد قوي من القادة دول كان هارولد جودوينسون of Wessex the brother of Edward's wife اقوى قائد من قواد العسكريين تحت حكم ادوارد كونفيسر كان هارولد جودوينسون وكان بيسمى هارولد جودوينسون اوف ويسكس وده كان ذا براذر اوف ادواردز وايف اخو مرات ادوارد ادواردز مارج انفورتلي واز تشايلدليس للاسف الشديد جواز ادوارد لم ينتج عنه اي اولاد And his throne was to be claimed by many parties. So when he died, بعد موته, his throne, العرش أو حكمه, was to be claimed, تنازل, تنازع عليه, many parties after his death. بعد موته, تنازع عليه, أكتر من طرف. Because of his mixed Norman and Anglo-Saxon blood. مش بس الأنجلو-Saxons 
لكن كمان الفرنش يا ترى مين كان بيتنازع على العرش بتاعه The first of the three claimants المتنازعين الثلاثة كانوا أولهم ويليام ديوك of نورماندي ويليام دوك نورماندي ودي منطقة في شمال فرنسا مش فرنسا كلها نورماندي إقليم في شمال فرنسا وكان الدوك عليه هو ويليام and then we have هارولد جودوينسون the powerful earl of Wessex وكان في حد تاني مهتم بالعرش The Viking King Harald III of Norway ملك النرويج King Harald III وكان معروف باسم Harald Hardrad Supposedly كان من المعروف أو it was said كان يقال إنه Edward willed the kingdom to William of Normandy his French relative ودي أهمية إنه إدوارد uh, was of mixed blood كان له أصول um, فرنسية وأنجلو ساكسون في نفس الوقت فقيل إنه at a certain time في وقت من الأوقات إدوارد willed the kingdom to William of Normandy إنه عمل وصية يسيب الحكم to his relative William of Normandy لكن كمان اللي حصل إنه he seemed to have favored Harold Goodwinson as his successor كان يبدو إنه بيفضل to favor to have favor كان يفضل Harold Goodwinson as his successor كخليفة يأتي من بعد ويبقى So immediately after Edward died Harold was crowned king The council اللي هو إحنا قلنا وصفنا قبل كده اللي هو الميتان The council of elders المجلس الاستشاري من كبار الدولة decided to crown يتوج هارولد as king but هارولد failed to defend the crown when William of Normandy and his invading army crossed the channel from France to claim the crown for himself William decided to attack and invade England and he crossed the channel from France to claim the throne of the crown for himself and Harold failed to defend the throne وإت هزم في معركة شيء Harold was defeated by the Normans in 1066 at the famous Battle of Hastings in October 1066 ودي المعركة اللي حن نعرف تفاصيلها في الجزء اللي جاي المحاضرة اللي جاي عن النورمانز في إنجلترا. The battle was recorded by the skillful weavers of Kent in England in the famous Bayo Tapestry وفي منسوجة شهيرة جدا اسمها منسوجة بيو عبارة عن قطعة قماش طويلة جدا جدا منسوج فيها أو مطرز عليها وصف كامل للمعركة and this is um, an image from the Bay of Tapestry اللي نسجها النساجين المهرة of Kent, England This is another part of the Bay of Tapestry وفيها واضح مكتوب اسم Harold Rex الملك Harold وهو منصاب uh, with an arrow at his eye الفهم فعني and he died over the hilltop ومات فوق التلال في معركة هيستينغز thank you very much for watching and for your attention next lecture will be on Norman Britain the coming of William of Normandy and his conquest of England thank you